Hi guys, hello. It is I, Martha Beck. Who's Martha Beck? It is I, and my <laughs> inimitable sidekick, sidekick. Give you the sidekick word, that seems diminishing. I like it. Well, well good there she is, the inimitable Rowan Mangan. Hello. Hello. How are all? We're back. Talking to break. ourselves. No, no, there's a lag. Is a lag. Okay. They're there. I know you're there. She doesn't know you're there. Zero I know you're there. Zero viewers and zero reactions. It's like, hmm, it's like the rest of my life. Uh, <laughs> Donna! Donna! Yeah. You nailed gonna, it this week. I'm going to put you right up on the screen. You so fast. Yes. Hi. Are you always in Chicago, Donna? We were watching Gilmore Girls the other night and someone said they were in Chicago and the response was, Chicago, windy, Oprah. Oprah. <laughs> and we liked that line. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, so many people's. Ontario, home of my Canadian and relatives. Florida. Yes. And Megan, we don't know where she's from, but she's a nice person. We got Hello one from you. Oxford. Is that from Oxford, England, or from Oxford? Is the one in Connecticut or somewhere? It's Massachusetts. Massachusetts. It's the Oxford. It's the Oxford. Only Americans need to like qualify their place well, with it another could place. Be somebody from Moscow, Idaho, or Hi, Alexa. Paris, Idaho. Isn't there a movie about? Paris, Paris Texas. Yeah, Paris, Texas. There you go. Could North all Canada. be in those places. Oh, look at that. Oh, there's so many. I know. Dwayne is here and Ashley and Colleen and Michelle and Alexa. Hi, Hi Alexa. Alexa. Alexa's always here. It's so good to see you again. It really is. Someone so to see everyone. Donna beat Wendy. Yeah. Same Wendy. She might be on. She might be on holiday from being the gathering room's fastest. Yeah, she's exhausted. <laughs> she's exhausted from the effort. <laughs> and who can blame her? Well, we should probably start. We've got 144 people. Yeah, now. thanks for all showing up. Thank you, on guys. This, the last, second last day, depending where you are. Of last the year. week, it was just holiday shenanigans all around here. And we figured it was holiday shenanigans for you guys, too. And it's like next week will be a different year completely how's that work i know and we are going to talk to rose mother in australia and we will be talking and we will be in different years so i said no spoilers mom yeah because it's gonna be 2019, 2019 right. spoilers all right i'm gonna get out of your way all you right do your thing and all right everyone enjoy more i love you i always like to do one big new year's resolution only it's not really a resolution it's um a practice more and uh, I'm writing just now and I've written before about the year I decided to not to tell a single lie of any kind for 365 days Ooh, that was a year if you want to like roto clean your life take that resolution I also had a therapist tell me later that once my biggest problem in life was that I keep my New Year's resolutions um, kept that one you can read all about it in my forthcoming book um, but this year I was thinking, what's a good one? Because it has to be real. It can't be just random. Like I'm I'm not gonna eat peppermint or whatever. Those aren't good enough. It has to be something that will really change my life. Because I'm a life coaching kind of gal. And the thing I was thinking about this year is listening. And I, I was talking to Ro about it and she said, you should do a gathering room on that because it is the most powerful of all relationship skills it will get you to your own truth faster than anything else. And it is actually easier than not listening in the following ways. Let me tell you. Um, I'm going to start first with listening to other people. We had a little get together with some folks from around here the other day. It's very exciting. But what with the holiday shenanigans, I was quite tired. And I came up with a radical approach to the evening. I was just going to listen to people. <laughs> so they came over and I sat and listened and I didn't worry about saying anything delightful or scintillating or wise. And as I sat there listening to them, I realized they were having a much better time with me than if I were trying to be scintillating or wise. I thought, eh, if there's one thing I have learned during all my years, it is that people don't really care what you're saying as much as they care about being heard. So if you're really listening to people, they go away with the impression that a deep bond has been formed. And there, a deep bond has been formed. But you don't have to work for it, really, at all. You just sit and listen. So I wanted to relate an anecdote that, that will prove this to you. Well, maybe not prove, but it proved it to me. 
long ago when I was but a last life coach. Oh, there's a good, <laughs> there's a good <laughs> specific niche. I'm a last life coach. Now I'm a crone life coach. But um, when I first started out, and I didn't even know what I was, um, didn't have a label, I had an incident. I recently told this to a group of my life coach training cadets. It was the first time after like 20 years, I finally decided to come out with this story to um, a group of life coach trainees because basically it was telling them that if they just sat and listened to people deeply enough, they wouldn't have to finish the rest of the course. They could still hang out a shingle and do pretty well at helping people. So here, here's what, how it went down. As you know, probably, I was raised Mormon, never had any stimulants, alcohol, caffeine, tobacco, nothing. Um, when I was about 30, after I left Mormonism, I had a drink of champagne and it thought the world would explode. It did not, but I never really, I also thought I'd be a fall down alcoholic, turns out, I don't much like intoxicants. Um, but one day, when I was first life coaching, a friend came over and used our kitchen to make special brownies. And you know about special brownies, but I did not know about special brownies. I had not eaten special brownies in college like everybody else I knew. To me, they were just brownies that tasted a little herbal, let us say. So I thought, well, I'll try, I'll try one. I ate one. I expected amazing things to happen. I expected to see like flying elephants, nothing. So I was like, well, bummer. This stuff does nothing for me. But the brownies were good. So I ate about five more. <laughs> <laughs> nothing, didn't do a thing. Two hours later, my first client of the day shows up. I, it was in the afternoon. This is when I had clients visit me in my office in my house. So I went in, I let the client come in, he sat down, I sat down, I had my pad of paper, I looked at him and realized that there was not a single straight line in the office, like the whole room was going and I thought, I don't know how this goes, like, what do I do now? But I could tell things were going to get really weird. So I said, just a minute. And I ran down the hall to my bedroom. <laughs> and I had, I've had every soft tissue injury in the world. I have fibromyalgia and my body's always doing. One of the things that I had in my possession was one of those neck braces that you put on after you've had a car accident. Because once I had a very spasmy neck for a while. So I put this thing on my neck and I ran in and into the fridge and got a, a whole bottle of cold um, coffee, right? like frappuccino in a bottle. And then instead of drinking it there, I, because I was already getting very like altered, I ran back to the office now with my neck brace on and I drank the coffee in front of it. Ah! In one gulp. Ah! And then I'm like, not knowing, mind you, that caffeine enhances the special brownies. So then I thought, okay, Okay, we're gonna start. And he said, I said, so how's your week been? And he went on for a while. And I, I usually, I would take notes occasionally if something struck my, I mean, as particularly interesting. But generally I just listened and I'd write down a keyword and I couldn't follow the conversation. Well, he finished talking and I had nothing. I didn't remember a single word he'd said and the whole room was going like an accordion. So I said, uh, did anything special happen? And he said, not knowing what he'd said. And then I focused really intensely as he went, as he talked about the last few days, I suppose. And at one point he said he had taken his dog to the groomer and I wrote down dog groomer. And it took me to the rest of the time he was talking to a dog groomer. By this time, my lips and tongue had gone completely numb. I couldn't feel or move anything. So we got to the end and I tried, I searched my mind for anything. He had said, nothing. So I said to him, tell me about the guma. <laughs> and he started talking about the guma. And I wrote down one thing he said, like, nice lady. And then I would say, 
it's all about the nice lady. <laughs> and this is how the entire session went down, you guys. Oh my God. I was so embarrassed. And after it was over, I went into my bedroom, lay down on my bed and laughed hysterically for about two hours until things started wearing off. It was, oh, whew, I am not, that also is not my cup of tea. So the next week he comes back. Oh, and I had told him when I sat down and drank the coffee, I said, sorry, I'm, I, I, I have some problems and I'm on some pretty heavy pain medication because I was not on my integrity cleanse at the time. So the next week he came and I, I put the neck brace back on and I sat down and I said, you know, I'm, I'm sorry about our last session because, you know, pain medication. And he said, oh my God, that was the best session we have ever had. I just, I left here so feeling so free and so purposeful about myself going forward. And I was like, I'm all about the powerful. I was, all I had done was repeat keywords and tell him to say more. And I had made more of a connection with this man than in all the other sessions we had had. So I realized at that time that say more and really listening. And that's the other thing is I was listening so intensely. Like I was just riveted on him, not hearing a damn thing. But he had had 100% of my attention and I had picked up on a few keywords. If you do this with people, let me tell you something. You will not have a lonely life because if you sit with someone, anyone, I mean, I've done this with people when I'm renting a car, I'll say to the person, you know, hey, you're working late. Tell me more about that. And boom, you know, everybody wants to be heard. So because I'm genuinely interested in people and because it's all great material for books, right? I have something of a practice already of listening very intently to people and asking them some follow-up questions if they pique my interest or if I happen to get them written down on a pad of paper. And I'm telling you, this is how to make, for, if you are lonely, do this. People will literally follow you around. Everyone is dying to be heard. And if you really listen, here's the thing, you can listen to their story about the dog groomer or whatever, but if you listen with your whole self, like Eckhart Tolle says, listen with your whole body, what you start to hear is not the words that they're saying, but the expressions of the heart. So somebody can say to you, oh, I just had the worst day. This woman, she just, she pushed her shopping cart in front of me like I was nobody. You know, you can, they can be quite annoying. And if you really listen, what you'll hear is, oh my God, this poor person is really at the end of her rope. She's exhausted. She's aching, she's hurt. Now you wanna be careful about saying, you're exhausted and hurt, say more about that, um, because that's intrusive. But if you just really listen, and instead of reacting to the words being said, if you listen deeply to the heart, then you'll respond with some compassion. And you don't have to say much. You say, oh, that's enough, that's enough. In Japan, they have a wonderful word. The word is aizatsu. And an aizatsu is a small sound that you make to encourage someone else in conversation. Like they actually say, ah, so, ah, so desu ka? Is that true? Honto desu ka? Is that true? Really? Really? Honto? Is that true? Uso? Oh, you're lying. So you just make these little noises and other people are like, yeah, he did. And I go, no, no, I'm not lying. It actually happened. If you just use a few aizatsu, any, New Year's party, you have to get through anything that happens to you. If it's a crowd of people, if it's one person, if you're stuck in an elevator with three people, try full attention and a few eyes out to, boom, you'll have yourself some friends for life. Now, they won't necessarily be the kinds of friends who listen to you. Those are somewhat harder to find, but they will be your buds. So that's the first thing about listening that I wanted to say. And then the second thing is, if you would develop the habit of full attention and listening, it is then time to listen to yourself. And this is definitely a path to self-awareness, awakening, and ultimately happiness. If you have the nickel-plated courage, 
I was going to say a bad word, to sit in a room alone and listen to your own mind, you'll first hear the chattering of your monkey mind, which sounds a lot like the woman going, oh, she pushed her garbage chute in front. You can't push a garbage chute in front. Of she pushed her garbage can in front. Not with that attitude. <laughs> you know, you'll hear the same chattering in your own mind that is so annoying when other people do it. And you'll also see that it pretty much never stops. <clears throat> and listening almost completely or, or being overwhelmed by the chatter in our own minds is what brings about most suffering in a human psyche. If you keep listening and you start to get some distance from that stream of monkey noise, you'll start to hear deeper things in yourself, just the way you hear them in other people. So you'll hear a bunch of chatter going, oh, you know, I don't like the way this person treated me, blah, 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 I wish I could have blah, 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 blah. blah. And then if you keep listening, what you'll start to hear is your own real story. So, oh, fatigue, oh, aloneness, ah, fear. So you start to hear what your deep self is saying. And just the way, you know, in, in Japan, honto desu ka, is it true? Is one of the things that they use as aizatsu and uso, which means, oh, I'll, that must be a lie. Those are really common aizatsu for a reason. Because if you listen to your own mental chatter and you stop it and you say, wait, wait, is that true? Is that true? Is it true that someone was trying to hurt your feelings because they didn't do X, Y, and Z? And then you start listening, not for the mind, but for something much deeper, the inner self, the wise self, the meta self, call it what you want, um, the archetypal subconscious. Is it true that someone was trying to hurt my feelings when they did that? And if you pause long enough and you wait for the answer, the truth will come back to you. And it will be very gentle and very convincing and it will make you feel calm, even if it's bad news. Like, did this person really have my best interest at heart when, you know, he asks me for, he asked me to spend all that money on, you know, a pyramid scheme. Did he really have my best interests at heart? Is that true? No, he didn't. Even though that's bad news, it calms you because it's true. So you start to hear the deeper, first you hear the chatter. That's always going on. If you listen more deeply, you hear something below the chatter. And if you start to ask it questions and then really listen for the answers. What comes back to you is the inner teacher, your, your sense of truth. And that you guys, that is the rock on which you can build everything else in your mind and in your life. The truth really does set you free and listening is the way to get to it. So you can either use this as a handy dandy, easy relationship building tool, or you can use it to gain enlightenment. Pick your poison. Go for it. Choice is yours. Choice is yours. So now, with the help of the inimitable row, Hello. I will ask you to ask me some things. Well, we already have some really good questions going. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start with Carol sort of saying it in one way, but a lot of people are saying it like, what about when you want to be listened to? How do mm. you, how can you promote actually being heard in your own relationship? We are not covering that in this week's gathering. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Hi. Hi, Um. This is a problem, and actually, probably most of you out there are good listeners. You know, I mean, I think that's typical of the people who sort of clump around uh, things like this, spiritual broadcasts. And it can be very lonely, as I said, if you're the one listening to everyone and no one's listening to you. But the, I tell you, the solution for that is not to get more people, not to find the right person, because with the best listener in the world present in front of you, working with you, you can still feel absolutely alone if you have not listened to yourself in that deep way. The, the reason that loneliness exists as a feeling is not the absence of another person doing a certain thing, but it is the absence of your own attention from your truth, from your true self. So if you really hear yourself with compassion and say, oh, oh, I am feeling really drained by listening to all these people. I'm going to go by myself. What would you like, you say to yourself? What would, you, what would make you happy? 
oh, I would love to read a really good book and uh, or maybe listen to an audio bit and play a video game at the same time. Ooh, a feast for all the senses. That's my particular thing. I would like to, the old standby, take a bubble bath, you know. Simple things, it's true. Simple little things are kind to the body, the, the animal body, and to the heart. And if you listen to yourself and give yourself those things, not only will you yourself be a source of love that will eradicate the loneliness, but then you will start to attract people who are able to hear that as well, because you will listen to yourself when you're around people that you that are not good for you, and you'll go more quickly toward the people who are really going to hear you. Yeah, nice one. So a lot of people are asking in various forms um, about people who talk about boring things rather than in a coaching session where someone's going to be getting down to the, the brass knuckles. So what what about, I mean, I put Amma's question up here. She says, "If were you bored going through a whole night just listening to people you didn't know really well from your example that you told? It's funny. If you're listening to them as a kind of detective, if you're always looking at well, what's really going on in people, um, they're endlessly fascinating even if, they're boring. Like you can be fascinated by their boringness. It really <laughs> I love that. It's true. It, I mean, a lot of people talk I just about, want to say I was there. These people in particular were, they were boring delightful. At all. They delightful were delightful. That's the thing is we don't really invite boring people over. <laughs> um, in fact, there are so many interesting people we can't invite over that yeah, that's it's awesome after a while, uh, when you've only gravitated toward people who are awesome people. Anyway, um, I, it, a lot of people who have read my first memoir, Expecting Adam, have told me that they particularly liked this passage that was about my in-laws at the time. And I loved them, don't get me wrong, I thought they were really good people, but they talked about restaurants all the time for hours. They would talk about the food and the decor at different restaurants they had been to. And I was like, um, restaurant talk. And I, I, I feel bad now because I realized that they probably read that book and weren't very happy with it. But um, a lot of people right. have told me it was one of the funniest parts of the book because I was listening to them as like an anthropologist. Like, oh my God, they have been at this for an hour and a half. They are really going to go to another restaurant story so <laughs> it really helps if you have people you can tell stories to later on so writing is always a good way to get it out and really if you're a student of human psychology even the boring can be interesting but if you're listening to yourself you might just say i'm leaving now and walk away without any further explanation Whew, strong medicine mm. All right, Sandy has a great question. She asks, what about when you strongly disagree with what is being said? That is actually one of the best times to take a deep breath and say, tell me more. Tell me more about your radical political tendencies. Um, a dear friend of mine this week told me that I should watch this documentary where a, a woman embedded herself with a group of neo-Nazi skinheads and got them really ranting. And he said, watch, my friend said, watch this. But after the first 20 minutes, just put it on pause and just breathe to try to get yourself under control because you'll be terrified, you'll be, you'll want to vomit, you'll want to shoot someone, you'll want to be just like them. Um, but then keep watching and listen. And he said, what you hear is a lot of people who probably should be in prison, but as you listen more and more, you realize these are tiny little boys. These are tiny little boys screaming about tiny little things. And he says, you'll, you'll get this sort of mastery because their violence and, and their bigotry is so frightening and so monstrous. But if you keep listening, they become tiny. It, you can feel that. And it, it can give you a sense of being less afraid, which I thought I haven't done it yet because my I was thinking about it today, planning this. I thought I should really do that because but I'm like, I'm gonna have to, that's gonna have to be a good day for me to really listen. But I've often had the experience of being in a seminar or something and having someone, you know, project mother onto me or whatever and really come at me with a lot of aggression. 
And that is the best time to just breathe really quietly and say, tell me more. I want to hear it all. And actually, if you let them keep going and you don't contradict them, negative energies tend to run themselves out. So another friend of mine, Boyd Vardy, told me about a, a strategy. I think we used it in one of our seminars where two people sit for 15 minutes and one is the listener and one is the talker. And the talker brings up a problem and the listener just says, what more would you like to say about that? And then that's all, just repeats that over and over. What more would you like to say about that? And the talker spontaneously comes to a resolution of difficult emotions and solves problems. It's the easiest thing to do. It's really effective. So if it's horribly objectionable and you need to get out of the room, by all means, do it. Um, if you need to argue and that really floats your boat, go for it. But try listening as a strategy if that sounds just exhausting. And watch what happens when you really let people have the full run of what they're talking about. If you really listen to it all, things actually change. It's amazing how many facets there are to, and how much skill there is involved in really good listening though. Like mm -hmm. <clears throat> you're making it sound easy, but you know, one of the things I most got out of your coach training is just that like, wow, all the different ways you can, you can come at it and all the different mm -hmm. ways you can unlock that for someone so that they're doing that work themselves. But wow, you're just kind of like pulling the tiniest strings to help them do that it's such a skill like I mean it's it's like there's just so many people saying I'm I'm, I'm a great listener I am. yeah it's actually my superpower and mm, I just want to yeah. say like if you want to level up <laughs> there's there's something to do but I just I, I do want to get this question in because it's a it's a good one yeah. um Martha if someone has a history of trauma and fear-based perspectives how can that person learn to listen and take in what's being said in relation to someone else in that very moment sometimes it's hard but the processing takes a few days yeah, and, and in the moment, if you start to have a strong reaction, it's really, really helpful. This is another reason I love being a coach. It, it kind of gives you an additional incentive to sit tight and, and sit with it. And if I start to react strongly to someone, which I don't so much anymore, but I used to quite a lot, um, the first thing you do is you soften your breathing so that you don't tense the body. And then you listen, you know, they're saying what they're saying. You can write down a note dog groomer but start right then listening to yourself okay I'm afraid now all right it's okay I don't need this person is not going to physically attack me um I don't need to argue I don't need to fight oh I'm very angry now oh I'm very yeah this is really getting my goat okay I'm gonna I'm gonna work this out in a safe space so listening to yourself even while someone else is talking to you that actually is something that you need to practice and but it's so worth it. You need to practice listening to yourself alone in a room before you can listen to yourself while listening to somebody else. But that's actually what you do when you start to have a strong reaction is listen to yourself, be kind to yourself, and then take notes on the other person. <laughs> they can come second. It's always best to put your own oxygen mask on first. Beautiful. I'm just, I'm just putting up like all complimentary oh, things now because yeah, I was like, cadets. I thought you'd talk for longer. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah well, we're almost at the Learning end. to listen. I mean, it is. It's fascinating though, don't you think, that just this listening. In in the coach training, Martha talks about this, this to talk about the Buddha thing. I can't paraphrase it with the. Oh, yeah. Just um, all you have to say to someone, um, if you want them, if you, if you want to say more than just about the guma, the guma, which will work just fine. But if you really want them to make progress, if that's if you're a little bit meddlesome like I am, or they've paid you like they, they will, um, you you think, what am I picking up about this? Like they're talking about this film they saw about Nazi skinheads, and you say, okay, well instead of talking about Nazi skinheads, what I'm seeing you do is I'm seeing you almost in a full panic and like this has frightened you and then you say the magic words we should do a whole gathering room on this tell me where i'm wrong about that where you know push back against me and the buddha used to um he he once was with a group of his students and he held up a little songbird that someone had cap captured and he had the songbird on his finger now when birds 
fly, the first thing they do is they crouch and jump, and then they open their wings and, and get a little air off the jump. So he would hold the bird like this, and as it crouched and then jumped, he would drop his finger so that it wasn't actually getting any push. It was like a bird in an elevator. It couldn't jump because his finger dropped. And he would say, sometimes I would, I would tell people something just to give them something to push off. Sometimes we need that to push off and get some flight to, to find the truth. So it's always useful to use the whole world as something to say, oh, is that, is that my truth? Is that my truth? And if something rubs you wrong as you listen, go sit with yourself and say, what part of that is not true? What part can I jump away from? And your answer will come back from the depths of you. And that really is, it's, it's, it sounds so incredibly simple, but I'm telling you the happiness, the peace that settles on you then is so immediate, it's so accessible and it's infinite. So I hope this all helps. It's been joyful to talk to you all without listening to a single word. <laughs> she did worry Any about of you, I was like, bro, <laughs> do you think I should do a gathering room on listening when I can't hear them at all? But we do hear you. Yeah, we read your comments can. and we feel your spirits and we all interact in the social media and of course, the every when, the, the, the dream time where we all go when we're fast asleep. Okay, so loves. we'll see you in the dream time until next see week. Next year. Happy, happy next year. Bye. Bye.